that somebody could make a living off of, you know, making comments about everyday life. I mean, and, and not just a living, I mean, a really good living, it, you know, what does that tell yeah. you about? And I mean, and, and, and some, some still today, I mean, Jerry still got his niche, you know, uh, but as far as the time frame, like, so you look at your George Carlin's and your Andrew Dice Clay's and, and your Kennison's and all of those things that we talked about before, like shock comments, right? Yeah. Um, they had their place that there was a societal change. There was uproar and unrest and protesting and all this different stuff. So it was like, yeah, we're going to, we're going to do that in our own way. Right. We're going to, we're going to do it in a very shocking way that makes people go, oh, kind of like burning bras. Right. Mm. <laughs> But with, but when you get to the like the late eighties and the nineties, it's different, right? A lot of that's kind of mellowed out and fizzled. Yeah. Like it's that that civil unrest is still there, but it's not as rampant and as wild a fire as it had been during other generations. So, what do comedians talk about, right? There's nothing really you can shock people with anymore. We've lived yeah. through we've lived through wars and decades of oppression and this now whatever. Now we're now we're in this boom of society and technology and everything else. What what do we talk about? It's well, true. What like like they do? They talk about everyday stuff. Like I said at the beginning of the of, with the twisty ties with the bread. Yeah. Or like for us right now, like you see things like a USB cord only goes in one way. Yeah. You got a 50, 50% chance of getting it right. <laughs> you get it wrong a hundred percent of the time. What's with that. Right. Yeah. Like, that's what people connected with during that time. And I mean, people still connect with that kind of material today. It's just different coming from different people, but that was the norm then. Like, Everybody was calm and just worried about everyday things. Nobody was worried about having to hide under your desk because of a nuclear bomb going off. Yeah. You know, the cold war was over, you know? <laughs> yeah, no, no. I, I think it's, it's very, um, it's definitely telling of the time period that like we were saying before about Jerry himself, his style of comedy, it does go, even though the things he talks about are modern and, you know, the things relevant yeah. mainly to eighties and nineties uh, audiences his style of comedy, just his overall appearance is very classic looking uh, and mm -hmm. sounding. He doesn't, you know, like you said, he's not a shock comedy guy. He rarely gets, you know, any language in his, his routines. Mm -hmm. You know, he's almost like a, a grown up boy in some ways, you know, always eating his cereal and talking about Superman and, you know, just kind of has, yeah, exactly. you know, I don't want to be a too, pirate and, you know, some of the, you know, all these <laughs> things like that is, you know, little kid esque, you know, and kind of like that's part of his charm. And, you know, I, I, I've always seen him and, and people like him as like ordinary guy just kind of reporting out, you know, debriefing the day, you know, and because, and think about the way he throughout the series, you know, Jerry's wardrobe is the most plain, you know, intentionally plain, oh, yeah. like just Jeans, polo shirt, button up shirt. Yeah. Sometimes a turtleneck, coat, maybe solid sneakers. color. And, and, he, and he always wore sneakers, even though he refused to race. That's right. That's right. You know, the, and, you know, kind of like just holding on to, to the, you know, just, you know, one sign to show, you know, that no, no pun intended being sign felt, but showing that, yeah, I'm a comedy guy. I have sneakers on, you know, yeah. Kramer was, you know, they call, they call him a hipster doofus, you know, throughout the, the yeah. series. And I think he's sort of meant to be the, you know, the holdover of that era that you were referring to. He's, he's the eighties, mm -hmm. you know, the seventies uh, kind of guy yeah. of self-employed you know, yeah, high school equivalency. equivalency. <laughs> and and so I think, you know, this as well, as well as who it's being made for uh, does t say also about the demographics shifting throughout the eighties and nineties of, you know, the reason why so much of their life was relatable, even if you didn't live in New York city, was that you know people were waiting much longer to have families to 
um mm-hmm. you know because like throughout and he doesn't ever get the closest he ever gets to getting married you know there's a couple times like i think it's the one you know to his parents but he, he was waiting he never, for himself to come along yeah right yeah and he's still just yeah i i like dating it's you know and that was becoming more and more relatable to people and, you know a show about a bachelor mm-hmm. Uh, would not have done very well in the 1950s when, you know, marriage happened sometimes right after high school.